Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh. <laughs> it won't be that one, mate. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about AGM batteries. Now, everyone bleats on about, you know, you need like lithium batteries. Um, and I will be blunt and frank, uh, I have no experience with lithium batteries whatsoever. And the reason is, is because at the moment, I don't need them. Now, I've got a 220 amp AGM Explorer battery, which I paid 289 quid from, from eBay. I'll put a link in the description down below. And for the last two years, okay, I've been absolutely fine. Now, I have on the system a 265 watt house panel that I paid 60 quid for from the Facebook selling pages. It was local, 60 pound, job done. Then I went on eBay and I looked at, uh, I think it's Voltaic Universe, um, and purchased a Victron Energy 100 slash 50 MPPT. Uh, what else did I buy? I bought the uh, BMV, because they all have uh, Bluetooth capacity. Uh, and I bought the, the little battery, battery sense, which is about 30 quid. So I have spent a lot of money on the Victron stuff. But the reason why I've bought the Victron stuff is because it really, really takes care of any battery that it's connected to. Once you go on the app um, and type in the specifications of the battery, which is, um, I think, it's pretty much a must, uh, with uh, Explorer, um, which I purchased a battery from, oh, who were they called? Alpha Batteries. And you can go on their website and you can look at the specifications of the battery and you can download the data sheet and it tells you all the specifications of that battery. Float, maximum charge, uh, the uh, depth of discharge, um, which is, you know, is a great help. So you can put all that into the Victron app um, and then it downloads it to the MPPT blood Bluetooth and it's almost fit and forget. So for the last two years, I've been running all that gear. Uh, I've been running a 12 volt compressor fridge freezer from Shoreline Marine. Uh, that was uh, 500 pound. They're now gone up to 600 quid because of the popularity. Um, by the way, this is not, I don't have any affiliate links with anybody. Um, this is purchased personally for my money. So, oh, hang on a minute. Teddy, come here, mate. Sorry, I've got the dog down here. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't been paid for any of this. It's just my personal experience with the equipment that I've bought that I'd like to say, or I'd like to pass on to you. Um, we all know lithium batteries have a nice big level power and then they just go bump like that. With AGM, it's a little bit more steady. Uh, the power curve goes off. So they're a little bit better than lead acid. What's up, mate? You getting a little bit bored? Oh, sorry about that. Um, you're gonna come up here? Look. Hang on, everybody. Uh. Say hello, Teddy. Mm -hmm. He's my mate. Um, so yeah, oh, sorry, where was I? Yeah, so at the moment, uh, I've got a Exxon fuse. Well, it's not a fuse, it's actually a breaker board just up here. And everything goes to that. I have the fridge freezer. Um, basically, that that that's the only thing that doesn't go to the to the um, breaker box. Yeah. So I've got a small fuse box in the back, and connected to that is the fridge. Uh, a couple of lights in the back in the garage, um, and the little battery sense. Uh, that's connected to it. Um, because the battery goes sh straight to that. Um, also, the battery then goes to a Victron 
Oh, Teddy, really? Mate, that's, that's bad. You got a Chernobyl bottom. Oh man, sorry about this. He's just done a. Don't look all innocent, don't you? You're not innocent, are you? So, yeah, as I say, I have no, no need for lithium, hence the reason why I don't have any experience with lithium because at the moment I don't need it even in the depths of winter um, obviously if you've been you know on this channel for a little while now you know that I had a uh, Ford Transit and everything I had in here well got in here sorry was on the Ford Transit so all I've done is take it out of the Ford Transit and put it into here so I've been well probably about 10,000 miles in the um, little uh, transit uh, all over the place south wales north wales um, i haven't been to scotland um, but i went to north wales uh, and it just chucked it down for a bit i had absolutely no power issues whatsoever for the whole two weeks um, i'll be the first to admit that i don't live in my vans full time um, part-time van dweller basically i'll get out as much as i possibly can but one thing is for sure I've never ever had the need to hook up to 240 volts. In fact, neither of the vans have 240 volt capability. The only 240 volt thing I have in this van is the inverter. And that is for just in case. Um, because I do have some uh, power tools that have like a, you know, you have to plug them into the mains. And they're made for, you know, they're little tools. So they're, they're not 12 volts. Uh, the charges aren't 12 volts anyway. The only thing I do have is a Milwaukee uh, charger, but that plugs into uh, it's a cigarette light adapter or a 12 volt adapter. One is for the uh, Milwaukee 12 volt, 18 volt charger, and the other one is for a pump to pump up my paddleboard. That comes off the little fuse box that's in the back there. Pretty much everything, as I said before, goes into a Victron Lynx uh, distribution, like bus bar type thing. And I think that was about 120 quid. It hasn't got the lights on it. It hasn't got no electronics in it. It's just a bus bar. Um, and I wanted that because it has the big bus bar bits on the end sticking out. So I could put my BMV onto that. So it goes straight into the negative. Uh, I was talking to uh, Geeky Phil and he told me that um, you know, the best way to wire them up. So that's what I've done. And as I said, I've been in the, in the transit for about two years and I've been in the Sprinter now for probably about five months and I've never ever had any power issues. So I don't have uh, any, any need for lithium batteries. And as I did say, I have no... You know, if someone gave me a lithium battery or, or I did need lithium, then I, I might change my attitude. But at the moment, for £289 against um, purchasing a pre-built off-the-shelf lithium battery, anywhere between, uh, was it 220 amps? So that's, that's about £1,000 to 1500 to probably 1800 for a Victron lithium battery. Uh, and they are initially an expensive purchase, but in all fairness, uh, and you know, like you, you will over time get your value for money. Uh, but at the moment, as I say, I don't, I don't need it. Two hundred and eighty-nine quid for a two hundred and twenty amp hour Explorer battery from Alpha Batteries has lasted over two and a half years. And I've looked at the Victron app, and I'll put a screenshot in now. Um, the life, the, the cycles of the battery is only nine. So nine cycles in two years and five months. And I believe that's down to the Victron uh, MPPT and the way they all link and talk to each other. That 
they don't cycle the battery unnecessarily. You know, it, the, the way that the stuff works is, uh, it's just amazing. So if anything, um, the Victron stuff basically just really, really looks after your batteries. So if you do need a lot of power, i.e. You, you might have uh, GHD hair straighteners for, you know, for your partner, um, or, or a microwave. Um, microwaves aren't the greatest energy efficient equipment, so I, I don't have one. I say the only power hungry thing I have in this van is the fridge freezer, and I think that takes like two amps when the compressor kicks on. Um, in this van, it actually has kicked on an ALF more than it did in the Transit. I think that's because it's slightly more encased, but it's still two and a half centimeters around you know, the fridge, as Shoreline say. Um, obviously in the Transit, the back was open, so it was a bit more cooler for it, but it's never ever been a problem. Uh, as I say, in the winter, obviously with, on bad days, I haven't had a problem. Chinese diesel heater, I've had that on. I've never ever started the van up. Um, I used to when I first got it because everyone said, oh yeah, just turn it on for the first couple of minutes until the glow plug goes out. Um, but I've looked at the power figures off of the BMV and it hasn't really made any difference whatsoever. So now I don't even bother starting it up, um, especially in the, in the Sprinter here, it, it, it's not required. There's so much juice in that battery. In fact, I've actually reduced the power going into it uh, because on the specifications, I'm pretty sure it said 15.10 volts at maximum. Um, I think that's a little bit too high. So I've brought it down to 14.75, I think it is. I'll put it on the app. Um, and it's been perfect. So that's my outtake on not really necessarily needing lithium batteries if you're not power hungry. So the only thing that I've got in here that is power hungry is the fridge freezer, which has just kicked in now. I've got two sets of remote control LED lights. I've got a 12 volt TV DVD player. In the corner here, I've got my Wi-Fi that's completely always, always, always on, never turned off. Got my Chinese diesel heater right here. Um, what else have I got? Uh, oh yeah, there's power socket here um, with another little lead. Um, that would be for charging uh, my Phantom 4 DJI drone. I do have USB sockets. I've got no, more sockets just here uh, to charge. Oh, sorry, buddy, to charge my MacBook Pro up. Um, so that's a 65 watt, one of these little, one of these little things, 65 watt. And then there's two USB sockets here to charge up like little, um, little MiFi. If I go walking, just, uh, and then I've got a little battery pack. Um, and I charge that up when I go walking, just in case I need it. Uh, what else I've got? Um, in the bag here, I've got a head torch, lithium uh, head torch. Uh, and then I've got USB sockets at the back, both sides for charging up uh, iPads, whatever. Now, in a really good day with loads of solar, I pretty much tend to charge everything up while the sun is out because it just goes on to float otherwise, and you can spend so much time on float, you think, well, might as well just have everything on charge while the sun is shining. And then at night time, you've got plenty of power. You, you don't need to, to drain your battery. Obviously, I watch Netflix um, at night time, and that's pretty much about it. So that's my two pence worth on not requiring lithium ion phosphate batteries at the price. Now we all know that obviously the more popular they are, uh, they're coming down in price and people have started making their own batteries. Um, and it is, yeah, it's great if you can make your own. You can probably make your own 120 amp AGM 
uh, sorry, lithium battery for the price of a 220 amp AGM battery. And obviously the, 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 the payoff is they're lighter um, and they got a better power curve. So if you're that way inclined, you can make your own uh, or just, if you've got, you know, you haven't got, I mean, I don't suffer from weight problems in this van, so I could possibly have another, another AGM battery, but I don't need one. So anyway, that's my two pence worth on uh, AGM and lithium. As I said, I've got no experience with lithium because I haven't had to need it. So uh, anyway, that's me done and dusted. Hope you enjoyed my little chit chat about lithium over AGM. So if you like what I said, uh, or if you've got any comments, I'll be very interested to read them. I like reading your comments and I'll always reply. So uh, give us a thumbs up. Click the uh, like and subscribe. Share me if you want. I don't mind being shared around. And uh, hopefully see you in the next video. So uh, cheers, thanks, bye.